welcome to this sh to shift this is your host palmonia gordon today i wanted to talk to you about the power button the power button that you have control i mean it's called your life we have a power button on our cell phone but we also have a power button for our life i'm your host palmonia gordon I'm an author, I'm a speaker, I'm a mom. I have over 23 years background at the post office before I picked up my bag to go to work one day and the thought of going postal really made sense. Now with five kids, going postal was not a good option. So I had to find my power button. How the heck do I turn this off? So today I wanted to talk to us about the fact that you control the power button. You control the ability that someone has to push or not push your button. I have five kids and oftentimes one of them will do something and the other will come back and goes, well, she, oops, no bad, sorry, no name. She made me do this or he made me do this. And we do that as adults. I'll raise my hand because I'm guilty. I used to do that. When I was married and I was living with my husband, man, could he push my damn, am I allowed to say that? Could he push my dang buttons? And I got to the point where I would literally shut down. That when the opportunity came, because when I wanted to deal with stuff, it was never a good time for him. It was never convenient. And then when he came, by this time, I, I would have a steel wall because I literally would just, would just shut down because that was the only way I could preserve myself. But we have an off button. And I, and I want you today, if you can, just think of your off button and how can you turn that button off. What, what are the means you have, just like the cell phone? If you have people in your life that when the phone rings and you see their number, you cringe. Oh my God. Or when you speak to them on the phone and the conversation is done, you go, why did I take that phone call? You just gave your power to the person that was at the, at the other end of the phone. By you not choosing to not answer the call, to let it go to voicemail, to press delete, to press snooze, and to say, you know what? Not today. The power to control how we feel is something that can save our life. And it, it's so simple. It's as simple as a breath of air. We cannot live without getting a new breath every, I don't know how often we get a breath every second or how much we take a second. Since I've been talking to you, I've been taking in quite a bit of air. Yeah, I know I've been putting some out too. Thank you. But the air that we take in is the power that we have. I was at this conference once and there's a gentleman he was talking about when he was 17 years old and he had gone into, back in the 70s, he had gotten into real estate with his dad when they had that big crash and he lost everything. And he said it was so bad that he didn't declare bankruptcy. They had actually put a judgment on his name. That means the judge signed that this cannot be cleared until X, Y, Z. Now, what a judgment actually means is in order to take it off, it's not like divorce and you get married and the first divorce is forgotten. The judge who puts the judgment on your name is the only judge that has the authority to remove it. Now, this gentleman is a multimillionaire today but he's not able to remove that judgment from his name. 
because the judge who put the judgment on, by the time he had gotten on better standing financially, the judge had already died. So now if he goes to some financial transaction and they ask, can we do, he tells them, no, you can't do a credit check because it's going to come up that this man has a judgment that says he's doomed to death, even though he has millions sitting in the bank and in asset all around the world. But I'm telling you the story because while he was telling us that story, we didn't realize, but he had gotten choked up and emotional and he told a joke and we, we started laughing and he took that minute and he came back after and he said, that was just to psych you guys out because after telling that story for 20 years, that was the first time I was at the point where tears were going to run from my eyes. So he had the power, he realized just to shift the focus on off himself, make a joke, do something else that took put us into a different space, but kind of allowed him to slip through the back door and get that fresh air and says, okay, I'm good. That's the power you have. The power to say today, I will wake up and I will stand tall. Today, I will be the best me. Today, I'm going to promise that I will open everything that's around me willingly to embrace the real me. We have been given our power to others for too long. But the sad reality of it is they have not asked for this power. They, I have a live studio audience, so that was in the background. <laughs> that was a ha-ha moment. But we give people power that they have not asked for. I remember when I got married. Oh, my gosh, I'm using a lot of when I was and I had it all planned. We're going to go on vacation. Sorry about that. So giving people power. There is a program. If you get a chance, it's on YouTube. I would love for you to watch it. It's by a guy called Danny Silk. He does amazing teaching, especially for kids and how to negotiate, if you will. But the reality of it is when you watch the program, you realize that what you learn doesn't, it's not about the kids. It's about you and the control and the manipulation that you give over to others. And I found my acronym that I had done for power. I know I just read one differently. I know my... My brain just kind of oozes them out sometimes. It scares me. But I have here that power is the possibility of what everyone can receive. But Danny Sill talks about kids and how to behave or interact with them. Because we, the reality is, we don't allow them to make their own decision and choices. And when they grow up and they become dependent, then we start to complain that, well, why aren't you doing this? In one episode, he there's a story where the parent made it clear to the child, okay, you're going to have to pack your lunch. You're going to have to get your lunch to school. And what Danny still teaches is when the child, something happens, that's not planned, and the child goes into tantrum mode. He says, if you're in the supermarket, you sound the alarm. Hey, everybody, stay clear. Get out the way. She's going to have a tantrum. And then he says to the child, go ahead. Because now the 
child is looking, oh, everybody's going to watch me do a tantrum. So it changes the way she's going to react. So instead of the child getting the upper hand and start to throw in the tantrum, which now the power is in her hand or his hand, and mommy's trying to pick her up off the floor and she's going dead way, you shift. See that? You shift the balance of power and you go, okay, she's going to do this. One mom, the daughter forgot her lunch, went to school and called, mom, I forgot my lunch. And this is Danny Silk's signature line. Oh no, what are you going to do? And the child goes, I don't know, can you bring it? Mom goes, I don't know. I'm not going that way. Mom lives on the same street the school is on. But she goes, I'm not going that way today. And she hung up the phone. School didn't call. After school, the child came home. Hey, how did that go? Oh, it was went great. I went to the office and I got to share lunch. With... Once that moment of initial panic is over, the brain kicks in and a solution comes up. But because especially, and, and I think this is mostly for us women, because our maternal instinct and in our mind, we believe I can multitask and I can do everything. We try to juggle and fix everything. No. Stop giving people the power button for your life. Stop allowing them to push and press and change channel. I don't like this one. I don't like this one. I don't like this one. I have 14 brothers and sisters. One of my niece that lives close to me, they actually use me as a threat when she was younger. Oh, mommy, I don't like this. I'm, I don't want to eat this. They go, you want me to call Auntie Pam? <laughs> I'm, I'm Pam at home. Do you want me to call Auntie Pam? Not that I did anything bad, but I usually say to her, did I ask you if you like it? Do you know how many kids right here in Toronto are hungry, are homeless, and need food? And that's what I tell all my kids. I don't ask you whether or not you like what I'm giving to you. What I'm telling you is you be thankful that you have something and appreciate it and accept it. So I know that's a, a kind of a big shift for you to get today. Oh my God, what are the tiny moves that I can do that will get the power of my life back in control? Give it back to me. Start with your phone. Start with your messages. Start with your email. Start with just taking a moment, lock yourself in the bathroom if you have to, and go and breathe. Because remember, one shift at a time gets you to one minute. And then another minute can get you to an hour. And you can make it through the day. But you have to keep shifting. I'm your girl, Palmonia. I love you. Thank you for joining us. See you again on the next episode of SHIFT. And remember, SHIFT stands for simply helping individuals to find their true passion, their purpose, their talents. And we're doing it through sharing our stories, through our tr through truths, our thoughts, our ideas, and just being together. If you would love for me to do a program on Monday and you say, hey, I like when I get the shift messages, send me a message. Go to my website, palmoniagordon.com. Send me an email. Leave a comment right here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, share the page, and let's keep shifting. I love you. Bye.